Hey, what's up everybody? Stickman number one coming back to you with part two of my Puff Sip chat conversation with Ms. Kimberly Primus of Flavor Cigars. Um, Enjoy. And we're talking about the industry, I think, a little bit. But, um, you know, tell me more about just, okay, you've launched Flavor Cigars. You created your cigar. Right. You, once you got that all settled, you, you know, everything was set. You're ready to go. Now it's time to launch the business now side of it. Now it's time. I'm assuming you were preparing all the while on the business side of it. Right. What does that look like to take a new cigar and get it into its first location now? And when and, and, and when I'm gonna give you one that you want without Cigar City Club in the mention. <laughs> Cause this is a, you got an automatic venue with Cigar City Club. So I that's did. that's almost like, you know, that's a great advantage that you had. It is. But so you automatically got yourself in Cigar City Club, you're not gonna tell yourself no. Right. <laughs> right. So, so of course. Second right. so but what's that look like for somebody that is trying to grow that brand mm -hmm. and get into other lounges? Is that has that been a challenge? It hasn't been a challenge, but if I can tell you it's a challenge anyway. I okay. mean I think in general it is a challenge. Mm -hmm. Even with Cigar City Club, if those if my cigars don't sell, they come out of there. That's true. Well, they, they need to make money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I can't just naturally assume that they're going to take up shelf space. That's true. Um, well, you're a businesswoman first. Exactly. I'm mm -hmm. a businesswoman first. So they need to be profitable. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, and I'm assuming they have been. And they have been. <laughs> luckily, <laughs> luckily they have been. Uh -huh. But I can tell you what has helped me Okay. Um, with this. Um, when we you know, moved to Atlanta, we were really good with building relationships. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we were out and about. We always patronized all the different clubs. Mm -hmm. We have memberships. Mm -hmm. at some of the different clubs okay. we support them um and we network it's just like smoking different cigars that's what it is we go to different lounges that's all the time. what it is that's different right. environment atmosphere so we were always out and about the different cigar um lounges and then got to know the owners mm -hmm. and the customers the clientele all the well. owners that, i say i can't say all but the majority of the owners that I've encountered here in Atlanta are very friendly with each other. We are, it's like a, it's a community. It is a community. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. We all want each other to win. It's coopetition. It, That's what I call it. It is. <laughs> we cooperate. We co competitors, right. but we cooperate but, at the same time. Right. That's right. <laughs> That's a good word. Because we want us all to be successful. In this yeah. Industry. Yeah. One wins, we all win. That's right. You know, especially the black owned clubs. If one wins, we all win. No We doubt. have, you know, we have a horse in a race. So... When we were out and about, and even when I was just, you know, sometimes when my husband and I would go out, because that's our thing that we do together as a couple. Mm -hmm. You know, we smoke cigars. Okay. Um, we do our brainstorming. Yeah. We, a lot of our life decisions have come out smoking cigars. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> um, but then when I'm with my girlfriends, you know, it's a different conversation. Of course. But we still, you know, we can be playful and kiki and all of that. Mm -hmm. But then we'll network, mm -hmm. you know, and support one another. I have girlfriends who own businesses mm -hmm. and and things like that so you know just to say that building relationships is very important it is it's extremely important when i was trying to launch my cigars i'm like oh you know marketing and branding is really important yeah. you know and i i had to decide all right these cigars represent me mm -hmm. and, and it's a lifestyle i want these cigars to reflect how i see people smoking cigars mm -hmm. my my interpretation my vision okay and you know it's important that you build relationships. So so that helped when I went to introduce these cigars. I knew the owners of, of the clubs. Mm -hmm. I knew most of the members or, or, or the uh, the customers that come in that, and out of there. That's where the relationships And that's in. where the relationships come in. Mm -hmm. um, people buy from people. People buy, and word of mouth. And word of mouth. You the know, product has to be good. It ha right. But you then, but, it, but then after that, people buy from people. Absolutely. They like. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, if you know you you've been good with with building relationships and and interacting with different people, mm -hmm. people remember that. People tend to remember good experiences. Yeah. You want to be around someone who makes you feel good, yeah. makes you feel respected, all that yeah. stuff, right? You want to be yeah, around people absolutely, like that. Absolutely, for sure. Yeah. So. Building relationships in that kind of concept, you know, obviously it's easy to just, you know, build personal relationships. But when you talk about building business relationships, mm -hmm. that obviously, that clearly didn't start with Flavor Cigars. How did that start for you? What did you do before all of this? Well, before Cigar before City Club, cigar <laughs> before Flavor Cigars, you know, obviously, what was your training ground, if you will? 
Well, by trade, I'm a human resources consultant. I have okay. a consulting business. Okay. And I'm a licensed benefits broker. Oh, okay. By trade. So that, right. that's my nine to five. That's what I do. Mm-hmm. So that's, you know, that taught me, and I've been doing human resources for over 20 years. Okay. And then I branched out and did my own business. So you're, a true, you're truly an HR pro. I'm an HR <laughs> pro. And that gave me an advantage because that's what I do for a living is mm-hmm. interacting with people. Okay. You know, I, I do that for a living. So... Mm-hmm different personalities yeah because you're advising people sure. sometimes you're arbitrating over difficult circumstances from time to time as yes. an hr person yeah that's conflict resolution <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> you know and it teaches you how to navigate around different personalities mm-hmm. you know the trick to hr any business is you know when you own your business is getting work done through other people Mm. Getting something done through somebody else or some other some relationship you have mm-hmm. to get the end result that that mm-hmm. you want because you can't do it all by yourself. It's impossible. Yeah, you will die trying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you will die trying. You can't. You have to have some kind of support system in place. When I first launched this business, I was the host, the cameraman, the editor, the social media guy, wow. the everything guy. It's tough, isn't it? And, it's, and, it's and tough. It, I ain't gonna lie. It was, part of it was fun. Mm-hmm. But it mostly sucked. It, <laughs> it's so much better than I got my man X here behind the camera helping me out. Right, right, right. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I have an editor now. It's so much nicer having an editor instead of me editing the video. So I yeah, you can't you can't do it all alone. You, you got to have a team. You have to have a team. So you know when you go into any business, especially you know the cigar industry, um, you need to make sure you have some type of support system, whether mm-hmm. it's a mentor or. An, an assistant who can help you, someone who is an expert in social media. You need some support somewhere mm-hmm. to get you going and get you up and running. Because mm-hmm. you and you're, you're not going to be able to think of everything. Mm-hmm. You know, for example, I'm. I was so excited to have my cigars, and then um, my people were like, "Well, what about the labels?" I'm like, "Oh yeah, I need labels." Oh. I guess that would help. I gotta put. I gotta so, put something so now on you gotta the cigar. Right. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I need a logo. I mean, it's so much. Did you design the, all I, your I labels yourself? I designed. I designed the labels. You know, the logo. Good job. My, well, thank Good you. Job. But it, you know, that part you forget about that part. Mm-hmm. Then you need boxes mm-hmm. and packaging mm-hmm. um, because you have to have a way to present it. Mm-hmm. You know, so these are all things that you're not necessarily thinking of. You're just thinking, oh, the cigars, the cigars, mm-hmm. and the flavors and the blends. But then you have to have a presentation yes. with it yes, um, so that it is, it's believable mm-hmm. and it's something that will draw people in. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you got to work on your brand and make sure your, your brand matches mm-hmm. your vision. Yep. And that's important. And I think one of my advantages and why I was able to do it so quickly is I knew exactly what I wanted it to look like. Mm. Yeah, it, you had already made it I up in already in my mind knew what I wanted it to look like. Mm-hmm. Um, because along the way, it's easy, it's easy to get overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. Um, so you have people in your ear, well, you need to do this. Mm-hmm. And you should try doing that. Mm-hmm. And, it, you know, was, then you're like, well, maybe I should. But no, you got to stay the course. And mm-hmm. I, I've learned that myself. There's times when I've deviated and I've, and I've regretted it. It doesn't end well. It doesn't end well. <laughs> and because even if, let's say, even if you stick with your own. Now, some, it's, it's always good to take advice and have an open sure. mind. Sure. But I also think that when you stop following your own intuition and your own passion sometimes it becomes a bit watered down because you lose some authenticity you because you it's not really it's what you intended to do anyway you're just trying to do what somebody told somebody you somebody to told you to do <laughs> typically it's people who've never owned a business trying to tell you what to do that's right that's right <laughs> so I was like all right well i gotta make sure that i stay true to what i wanted mm-hmm. now i'm all, like you said i'm open to like suggestions constructive criticism mm-hmm. um and, and and that but you you don't want anything to compromise your product That's and right. what you wanted it to, to look like. That's so, right. you know, that that was important. But yeah, the relationships in any business, especially the cigar world, is really important. It is very you important. You have to build that that um, that trust and be a, a good communicator mm-hmm. and someone that they know that if they needed help from you, you would be there. You know, it's a two-way street. Mm-hmm. So, and I, and I think, you know, I've done a good job with that as well, with the other cigar club owners. Mm-hmm. And um, so I'm currently working on getting them in some of the local Atlanta mm-hmm. um, cigar lounges. Uh, I have a friend that is about to open a lounge in uh, 
Charlotte. Okay. All right. And so I'm going to get them in there. It's a great city. Yes. Yeah. And Tampa, I have another. My hometown. Tampa. <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't know that. I Home mean... of the Super Bowl champs. Okay. Keep going. <laughs> right, okay. I always got to drop it. Everybody's right. sick of me saying that, but I got to drop it. I got to drop it. Um, and I know uh, a uh, couple of people in Houston. Okay. Right. They also own a cigar line. Another great city. Yeah, yeah another great city. So I'm going to work on doing that. That these are This is what I have for the upcoming year. Okay. It's what I plan. So 22 big things coming? 22. Now that, you know, this pandemic is starting to die down, hopefully. Knock on. Knock on yeah, knock yeah. on wood yeah. so I can get out there and go on my world tour. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to take you back to something that we touched on earlier being a female in this industry, and in particularly a black female, a woman of color in mm-hmm. this industry, the industry is exploding. It is. And we do know that the black female demographic is one of the fastest growing demographics, yes, if is. not the fastest in the industry, right? Right. We're influencers, women are influencers, women are lounge owners, right. women are cigar brand. Right. Uh, what, what do you think of all this? What's your take on all of that? I think it is so fascinating to see it. Mm-hmm. I, and like you said, because we're in different capacities. Mm-hmm. Um, and it always amazes me, just when I, you know, whether I'm in here or just out and about, mm-hmm. and I come across these women and, oh, I'm about to open a cigar lounge, and oh, I want, you know, let's talk. And I, and I always tell them, you know what, that that is awesome. Congratulations on that, because mm-hmm. It's it's the unexpected. Mm. It's the unexpected, mm. and I and I, I applaud the women mm-hmm. that are doing that because I think we're really starting to get a voice. Yes, you know, people are country. taking you seriously. You're starting to take us seriously. Mm-hmm. They are because mm-hmm. that was my hesitation. Like, oh, who uh, am I going to have a tough time? Because it's a male dominated. It, 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 it just is. It, it is. It you is. Know, but it is. I tell you, uh, every woman that I've had on the podcast and. and I only had a few, but I want to have a lot more because there's so many women mm-hmm. that are just, uh, you know, I'm inspired by it. Right. Just watching the journey. And, right. we, you know, we had Robin from Blue Smoke on. Right. Um, we had uh, Yvette and Yvonne from uh, Trey Linda's Cuvana. I Cigar. saw that. They were fun. The twins. And, 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 fun. Now, and we have you on now. Right. We have uh, Heather and Rafa, the husband of my down at Heaven. So we've had some incredible women on the show. Right. I look forward to having right. many more. What advice would you give the other women that are just breaking? into this industry or even just contemplating it right now I would tell them don't be don't be afraid mm-hmm. you know take a chance yeah because it's, it's always those concepts that you're not sure of those are always usually those are the ones that do really well mm. and you're not gonna have all the answers it's okay not to have all the answers mm-hmm. people still ask me stuff and I'm like I have to get back to you I don't really know mm-hmm. you don't always have to know everything yep. in order for it to be successful mm-hmm. what you do need to know is how you want it to look and you need to make sure that you have built some good relationships along mm-hmm. the way mm-hmm. to help you. So it's okay, like I said, it's okay if you don't know everything. Mm-hmm. And find somebody that has some knowledge mm-hmm. that you can learn from mm-hmm. and can, you know, navigate you through some of the um, landmines, yeah. so to speak. <laughs> Speaking of landmines, <laughs> what do you wish somebody had helped you with before you got started? Like, what do you wish you knew, knew back then? that right. you know now is there anything you would pick out i would say that the packaging and all the presentation that has to go with mm-hmm. a cigar line and someone that could really um educate me on making sure that the branding coincides with the look of your cigar mm-hmm. and it matches the message you're trying to send Mm. with your product mm-hmm. they ha- they really need to coincide mm-hmm. they need to correlate so mm-hmm. you know make sure you get someone on your team that knows how to do that yes that's important it is important because yeah. you know as as the brand creator i'm just focusing on the blends mm-hmm. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know that's what i really was focusing on but you do you need somebody to help you mm-hmm. in those other areas that's true that's yeah. true and that's and that's where you bring on expertise mm-hmm. you know me having a videographer someone who hits point and click better than I can. Right, <laughs> right. A whole lot better. You bring on expertise. Um, and people that can edit, but I can right. edit, but I can't edit as good as my editor right. can, you know? <laughs> so that that's that that's important uh, in having that. And one of the things that um when I when I think about, you know, female entrepreneurs in particular when I think about the cigar industry, one thing I've been super impressed with with the ladies is that and this kind of goes back to corporate America in general. Women I just hate this I don't even know how to put it. Sometimes y- y'all y'all are more studious. 
<laughs> then we are, you ask better questions, you're more inquisitive. And, and, and there's a lot of men, obviously, in this industry that know their shit when it comes to cigars. But the one thing that's really impressed me about this influx of women that, that are now part of this industry and part of this lifestyle, you know your shit too. If, as good, if not better. That's right. <laughs> Right. Yeah. I and that gives you probably that. the confidence too, right? And it does. Yeah. It, it really does. And, you know, and it's important to have that confidence. Mm -hmm. So I would say to all the, all the ladies out there thinking about doing anything in the cigar industry, be confident about mm -hmm. what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to ask for help mm -hmm. because you know more than what you think. Yes, I knew a do. lot more than what I thought I knew. That's right. You know, so when it came put, put to the test, mm -hmm. I knew it. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize and you know, you don't realize what you're absorbing when you're out and mm -hmm. you're interacting with people and the information, mm -hmm. you know, you're taking in. And, and you're right, it's true. Women tend to be more detail oriented. Yeah, yeah. they're more detail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we tend to be, you know, uh -huh. but um, that's an advantage sometimes. So, mm -hmm. you know, that does work in our favor. Uh -huh. uh, but yeah, it's, it's great to see the women out there putting their hat in the ring. Uh, I applaud I, it. I, I think it's awesome. It is. I think it's awesome. It you is. You know, especially with our women of color, but just all women in general. I in think general. it's just a beautiful right, thing. Right, it is. You know, everyone has a kind of favorite lounge they like to go to, or maybe a favorite vibe they like in a lounge. Right. Do you have one that you gravitate towards? Well, the one I gravitate towards isn't even in Atlanta. Oh, It's okay. in uh, Brickle, right outside of Miami and Florida. It's okay. called Empire. I have not been yet, it's but I've heard brand. nothing but great things about it's it. So it, you know, it's got that Miami vibe mm -hmm. to it, but it's, you know, it's laid back, great music. And it's at Brickell Station, which is, is a great right? area. I love Right. Well, I used to live down there oh, in oh, South so Florida. Oh, you know the area. I know the area oh, very well. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. so I used to hang out, but they didn't have Empire at the time. Right, but, right. But uh, yeah, it's it's a great place. It's a great place. So outside of Atlanta, that's probably my favorite one. Okay, all right. Um, in Atlanta, I like Fellowship. Okay. I really do. Um, of course, Cigar City Club. <laughs> of course, Cigar City Club. And, 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 and when you think about specific, outside of specific lounges like that, like Empire and Fellowship, all mm -hmm. both great lounges, by the way. Right. Um, always, one thing we talk about in, uh, on the podcast is we like to, we put lounges in the categories. There's kind of like a, there's kind of like your swanky, get dressed up lounge. Then there's the, hey, it's more like a sports bar. Just come in and watch right, a game and kick right, out with your sneakers right. and t-shirts on. That's a good point. Uh, then there's kind of the more um, always more conservative. Yeah, the really conservative. Right. You know? <laughs> there's all types of flavors to allow. Do you have a kind that you like to, are you more of a, I need to get dressed up and it's, make it's it an my, event? It depends on my mood. Mm -hmm. It really does. Like sometimes, like, oh, let's just go to Burns. You know, if mm -hmm. we're at the game or whatever, mm -hmm. we'll go over there. Because that's more like a, a laid back thing. It is. You, know? you could go both ways. You can go both ways. Right. Right. You can go both, right. ways, can go yeah. both ways. If we're trying to do something a little dressier, fellowship, mm -hmm. Brett Fowl booth is nice. Yep. yep. Um, I know. just recently became a member of that one right. myself. So, right. Yeah. Brett Fowl booth is great. Mm -hmm. um, it's a different little feel to it. Got that speakeasy. Got the speakeasy. Right. Kind of mm -hmm. old world feel to mm -hmm. it. So that's nice. You want like a sports bar, patios, you know, cool mm -hmm. to go yeah. to. Mm -hmm. You know, so it. That's the great thing with Atlanta. That's a great Not thing. That's something for everybody. That's right. Me personally, I I like them all, first of all, because there's a time and a place. And right. I never know what my mood's going to be like. Right. But when I'm just, just anytime general smoking, I, I look for the, what I call the um, the man caves, where it's just, where it's literally just a small little lounge yeah. and you've got a few yeah. chairs and you go in there and it's right. really quiet. Right. There's no music bumping. It's right. just, you know, maybe have a TV on or something. Yeah. And I like that. Well, a lot of people do, you mm -hmm. know, especially just getting off work or something. You just mm -hmm. want to unwind. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want anything that's, that's too much going on around you. Mm -hmm. You know, you may want to pop into a place that's smaller and more yeah. laid back. And but when it's time to turn up. When it's time to turn up, then, I'm, yeah. This is on my stop. It's more than likely, this, my, this is going to be, be one of my around. stops. <laughs> it's going to be one of my stops. So this is not meant for the wallflowers. No, this is <laughs> no, no. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can come in here and just chill at the bar or you whatever. Can, yeah, you can do cause, that. Because, yeah, I've, I've seen people right. come in they and just kind of kick lot. back and relax. Right. And they they don't necessarily participate right. in all the fun right. that's happening. They just kind of do their own thing in the corner or whatever. Right. You but can, I can't come in here and not participate. It's a little hard. It's, it's hard. <laughs> because someone is going to engage you. That's right. They're going to start talking to you, chatting you up. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, you're going to be clanking glasses. And yeah. <laughs> you know, and don't, and, let, don't let the DJ be in here. Right, you might start right. dancing. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, you know, that's that's a great thing with 
uh, with different cigar lounges, but they all have one thing in common: it's it's, it's enjoying it's enjoying the smoke. It no, is. it really does bring it people comes together. Back to this, at the end of the it, day, it really does. It comes back. It to this. all circles back, mm -hmm. it, you know. And I wanted a cigar line that represented different moods, and because I'm like that, I don't always want to smoke the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I want something um, that's not too sweet, mm -hmm. um, that doesn't have, and that's not fruity. So I made, oh, you know, if I got. Uh, whiskey i'll go for the johnny walker black and do the pairing okay uh, um and what is uh your favorite whiskey by or just spirits in general do you have a certain we, uh, we always say puff sip we know right. talk about your puffing preferences but what's your what's your sip i am a bullet bourbon girl uh, nothing wrong with that. I, I really like the bullet rye I'm not yes sure. that's the a good bullet one. rye is really right. one of my favorites right yeah. and i also like uncle nearest Uncle Dears is great that's, too. That's, that's a great one. Oldie but good. Oldie but good. <laughs> and, and I'm not a whiskey snob. Like I like. I, Me I can, neither. I, I, I'm, Me you know, neither. one of the things we do on the podcast all the time is we we try to educate people on on, on spirits at a certain price point. We will get expensive from time right. to time. I'm not against it because it's right. some great, you know, some right. great stuff out there, right? But you don't have to pay a lot of money. That is very true. To, to have a good pour. That is very true. I, so, I discovered that. So we kind of go $50 and, and under but I like for our you, podcast. But you can go up. There's right, always. Right. You can go, go up. Yeah, I mean, the sky's a limit yeah, on that. Yeah, way up. It really, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I like that you do that. I love that you pair and then, you know, you introduce a cigar with, with whatever spirit that you're drinking. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's a great educational piece that you do. Yeah, because right. I think most people, when they smoke, they usually have a drink. Usually. Most people pair. They don't even realize they're pairing. You know, they, but that's what they do. I, I, uh, I'll be honest. I, yeah, I, right? I rarely smoke without having a that's drink. That's what I'm, right. That's what I'm saying. It, well, it, unless it's in the morning, I'll have coffee. Okay. I gotta have my coffee. <laughs> I'm a coffee drinker. I'm, a coffee not, drink. I'm not, I'm not doing Me whiskey too. at nine o'clock yeah, in the morning. I'm a coffee drinker. Yeah. I'm a coffee drinker. And coffee and cigars go great together, they right? They do. Yeah. Speaking of coffee, mm -hmm. uh, when I, when I first launched my, uh, cigar line in July, mm -hmm. Uh, the black owned company, coffee company, mm -hmm. um, one of the owners is Kim Fields. Ah. They reached out to me okay. and they wanted to feature my cigars for Hampton Fashion Week. Oh, wow. So my cigars, you know, got the opportunity to be featured and seen over in New York and um, Hampton's Fashion Week. When was that? That was July of this year. Oh, wow. This past July. That's awesome. End of July. For year one. And to I be just, featured I know, I know. I know. Awesome. So that was, and again, that comes from relationships. Mm -hmm. So that happened because one of um, my finance people, mm -hmm. he knew them. Mm -hmm. He knew the company, the coffee company. And they were like, oh, we're looking for a black owned cigar mm -hmm. company that we can feature over at Hampton's wow. Fashion Week. And he said, oh, one of my clients, she just launched a cigar line. I'll mm -hmm. give you her number. So that goes back to what I was saying about relationships how when you're you don't even realize and when it's least expected mm -hmm. how they'll work for you that's right so people think about you people remember people you. remember you they mm -hmm. do so mm -hmm. you always you know you want to be memorable you always want to leave a conversational good terms mm -hmm. and where someone can remember who you are like i remember speaking with you that's i right. don't remember your name but remember we were talking about that's such right and, such? and that's that's important right right well when, uh, you know i'm a i'm a nerd and i've been in technology mm -hmm. for my most of my daytime my daytime career if right. you will and um and i read a lot of business books from time to time but one of the things that really resonated with me that uh when i heard a ceo of a fortune 500 company say one time is that the most underrated thing about business in general about people in business is likability oh absolutely so many people think um, excuse my french but there's a lot of people out there that think you got to be an asshole to be successful yeah and yeah. you don't it doesn't work it doesn't it, it doesn't all it does is it, it instills fear in people right because right? and some people may do what you want them to do because because they're scared they're scared you right? don't want to do bully management yeah that, exactly yeah. that never gets you the results mm -hmm. the minute people it, it doesn't build loyalty i'll tell you that mm -hmm. because the minute people oh, so, oh the minute they have an opportunity to burn you they're, they're gonna burn they're, you and they will remember that <laughs> uh, yeah i never have yeah mm -hmm. you know they remember that people you'd be surprised 
surprised at what they remember. Mm-hmm. You know, they'll remember good things and, and just as easily they'll remember those bad things good, about you too. Good news travels fast. Yes, bad and news bad. travels yes, faster. Yes, it does. <laughs> so you do have to be likable. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you got to be approachable too. Yeah, that's right. You know, I can't sit in here and just like turn my back and not engage anybody. No. You have to talk to people and, you know, talk about their life and um, what they're working on. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing cigars will do. You know, people just start talking about things going on in their life. Yeah. You know? It it is, um, it is one of those things that is is truly like the peace pipe of today. It is. It It is one of those things that people just kind of sit back and and, and just, and you get people from different walks of life who never would have spoken in the past will start speaking. They start speaking, Mm -hmm. you know, and then and you find out you have some things in common that you never would have thought. No, or you know people in common. All of a sudden, you're friends. Right. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, I'm going to tell people about my cigar, about your cigars. And that has happened a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and another thing, you know, for people who are starting a cigar line or thinking of doing that, make sure that you are prepared to give them out promotionally. You know, as promotional. Uh, yeah. Don't be so hung up on it. I, don't, I can't give away free stuff. Mm-hmm. Because what's going to happen is when you give those out, um, you know, as a promotion, people remember that. Mm-hmm. And they're going to, oh, let me go back and try this again. Mm-hmm. But I think, I'm, you know, I want to try these different flavors. Mm-hmm. I know they got different flavors. Mm-hmm. Last time I had a bourbon, uh, let me try this Johnny Walker Black or mm-hmm. this Peppermint. Mm-hmm. Um, so don't be afraid to give away free products. Yeah, and, and I'm so glad you said mm-hmm. that because that is, I'll be honest, that's a pet peeve of mine. That's a huge mine pet too. peeve of mine. And when mine I say too. that, it's a pet peeve, that tells me that you may or may not really know business that well. You're not ready. You're not ready because no. when, I, and one of the most common mistakes a lot of entrepreneurs make is being undercapitalized. Mm. And, and, and sometimes you do have to start on a shoestring. You Believe do. me, I know it. I understand right. that. <laughs> but part of that shoestring budget needs to be accepting of the fact that you may have to give away services and merchandise pro as a promotional effort at early on. You That's will. just part of it. There's no way around it, really. There's no way around Especially it. And you got to be okay with that. And you have to be okay with that mm-hmm. and not feel like, I can't believe I'm giving away free stuff. It's not about you. No, you're promoting your business. You're promoting your business. There's a cost to promoting your business. Always. And that's what you're doing. Right. So <laughs> <laughs> make room in your budget for that. Mm-hmm. You know, make sure that when you're out at shows or you're being a vendor or you're just out on a cigar circuit mm-hmm. that you have some and you're willing to pass those out for free. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and, you know, along with your business cards. But the actual product is better to give out. Yeah, I'll use my I'll use mine and my business as an example. <clears throat> I think we're like 57, 58 episodes in. I lose track right now. I probably did the first 35 episodes before I got any bit of merchandise, wow. any kind of sponsorships. I believe it. And I enjoyed it. I don't, I don't complain right, about it. Right. But I but that cost me a lot of time, money, it does. gas, driving around, exactly. paying for people to help me. Exactly. But that was an investment in your and business. And that's that's exactly what it is. <laughs> It'll come back. I mean, mm-hmm. you're investing in your business, so it's okay to give things away. Um, it's okay to. And you may not have repeat customers. That's okay. But mm-hmm. you can say you got your name out there mm-hmm. and you got your brand out there. Mm-hmm. Um, but be prepared for anyone who's starting yeah. or thinking about it. Mm-hmm. Be prepared for that that piece of that. And there'll be a day when you can command top dollar. That right. day comes. <laughs> and that's that, what you got to that, tell yourself. That's what that day will come. come. That day it will come. It really does mm-hmm. come. And that's, that's what I see slowly starting with my cigars. I'm mm-hmm. seeing repeat customers. That's beautiful. I am. That's I'm beautiful. seeing these faces that go in there. Oh, and they're looking for flavor they're cigars. They're looking for flavor cigars. Oh man! And then they're telling their friends about it who smoke, and mm-hmm. it, it, you know, it's it's getting some traction. Mm-hmm. So you know, that's it's nice to see uh, that hard work starting to pay off. I love it. I love it. So yeah. next year, 22, you're going to be doing some consulting, helping other people out. Right. What's next for flavor cigars? I think for flavor cigars, I'm done with the actual flavors. I I have seven of them now. Okay. I think I'm good with the different flavors. I got something for everybody. Uh-huh. Um, I plan to, like I said, get out there and start um, visiting the different lounges and get my cigars in those lounges. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to do uh, Black Smoke Miami. Okay. I'll be a vendor there. Awesome. Right. Awesome. That's going to be beautiful. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's going to be good. Uh-huh. Um, come across a lot of different people there. Mm-hmm. And mostly now, yeah, for the upcoming year, I just want to focus on getting my name out there mm-hmm. okay that's awesome that's awesome get your name out there and 
people can go get your um, cigars on flavorcigars.com, correct? Right, flavorcigars.com, Instagram at flavorcigars. Okay. And Excellent. always here at Cigar City Club. Always here at Cigar City. Right. And come hang out. Come yeah, hang out at Cigar yeah. City Club. Absolutely. Check out Kim. Check out Lonnie. Right? Yes. And check y'all, out Lonnie. Could, y'all hang out. Do your thing here. Right. Whenever you're in Atlanta, come see. Hit it. Shoot me a message on Instagram because I'm liable to come hang out with you too. I, I never need an excuse <laughs> no, to come you do hang not. out here. And say, Always say, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So, last thing I have for you is we talked about a lot. This has been an awesome conversation. Lot, right. I'm sure I forgot something. What did I forget to ask you? What should uh, I have asked you that I forgot to ask you? I know we did. We covered a lot of territory. Oh, I guess I need to talk about my wholesaler also. Oh, okay. So, um, in addition to being a cigar line owner, I'm also a black female wholesaler. Okay. Um, which is, there are many of us, mm-hmm. <laughs> kind of rare. Mm-hmm. So not only can I um, obviously sell my own cigars, I can stock other cigars as well in Cigar City Club and other lounges because I'm licensed. Incredible. Yeah. So Incredible. It's, it's, it's twofold to that. And I, and I saw that as yet more of an investment in, in my business mm-hmm. and um, another caveat to that Mm -hmm. you know making sure that um i do something where it's twofold Mm -hmm. Uh, not all all my eggs aren't in one basket (laughs) so to speak um so that also allows me to meet different people and get out there and um so if i okay sorry no get my brand out Uh there and get my name out there because i'm a wholesaler as well yeah yeah so i just want to make sure i'm clear on that so that everybody understands exactly Mm -hmm. what that means if me, Reggie Kimball, goes out tomorrow and opened up a little cigar lounge, which I have no plans of doing, by the way. <laughs> um, I just, I love being a patron. <laughs> but if I were, or right. if anybody out there were, right. they could call you they and could. you could help them stock that. Absolutely. That right. They tell me what types of cigars they're looking for, mm-hmm. um, what they want to sell, and I can get them for them. You have the relationships to make that happen. Right. Right. That's beautiful. Yeah. Congratulations well, on that. Thank sister. you. I'm so proud. Thank you. Makes me feel good to sit here and talk to you. <laughs> thank and I learned you. a lot from you today, too. Our whole goal is to educate. Same here. I so learned, I've learned. I learned so thank you for that. And thank you for having me. Oh. And, you know, Anytime. hopefully we get to come have you on here again soon. We got to talk more about this whole stuff. Oh, business. yeah. As everything grows and as our profile grows, as your profile continues to grow. Sure. Hopefully, you know, yeah, you're we'll always. Need a follow gonna, up. There's going to be a follow up. <laughs> and. Forever and always, you are now an alumni of the Puff Sip Chat Podcast. All right, then. So you're welcome back anytime. <laughs> anytime. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank that gives you, you special privileges. All right. I'm in, I'm in the club now. You're in the club. All right. You're in the club. <laughs> you can Puff Sip Chat with any of us anytime. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, hey, everyone. I'm here with Miss Kimberly Primus, the owner, founder, CEO of Flavor Cigars. Right. Thank you for being on the Puff Sip Chat Podcast. And thank you, Puff Sip Chat. It's been a pleasure. It's awesome. So remember, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that comment button. Let us know what you think. And until next time, oh, no, 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 not, not next time. Get your stick me and swag. It's Christmas time, y'all. You got to buy some swag and help us pay for this stuff, right? <laughs> um, so no, it's been great sitting here chatting it up with my sister here. See us on the next episode. Puff Sip Chat repeat. I'm Stick Man number one. I'm out. Please show your appreciation. Go get some Stickman swag, stickman.blog. We got Puff Sip Chat t-shirts. We got some great hoodies. We got whatever you need and whatever color you want to see it in. So check us out. I'm Stickman number one. Till next time, Puff Sip Chat repeat, baby. I'm out. Peace.